Leafs talk, J.D. Bunkus, Sam McKee, Justin Bourne. Here we are. Time is a flat circle. The Leafs lose to the Boston Bruins in the first game of the Stanley Cup playoffs. If you're watching this on YouTube, please uh, leave us a comment or hit the thumbs up. And if you're listening for the first time on Spotify or iTunes, uh, you can follow the show, subscribe, and uh, follow every single one of them. Uh, gentlemen, if uh, you ask ChatGPT to scrape the internet and come up with a AI way for the Toronto Maple Leafs <laughs> to lose a game... I think it would come down to stars not converting chances, losing the special teams battle, getting out goalied, losing little physical battles, having overly ambitious penalties and physical plays from depth guys, and a loss to the Boston Bruins. Mm. Justin Bourne. <laughs> <We're> oh, <good. laughs> Funny, that's that's it's nails. It's like those uh, you know, I forced an AA model to to read a thousand of these and write the script. Like that's exactly it, it is the most frustrating thing about being back here is they couldn't find a new way, a new plot to give us. But yeah, the exact uh, same sad thing tonight, fellas. Yeah, to quote Dan Hicks uh, the 2008 U.S. Open calling Tiger Woods, expect anything different? Like, no, it was very, <laughs> like, Listen, it was uh, very, very uh, predictable tonight, fellas. I recognize it was. That. This is why the writers went on strike in Hollywood is because they know ChatGPT <laughs> can come up with this kind of content. Yeah. They know that they have this ability to basically write the script. Uh, okay, let me start with you, Sammy. Do, do you think that out of everything tonight, though, that I just listed, did the Leafs yeah. get goalie? Uh, did they just simply lose the goaltending battle? I think there was a stretch at the end of the first period and on the first on the power play coming out of the into the second period where they're on the four on three. There was probably like a five minute stretch of hockey time where they really had a ton of chances and it felt like if they got one to go there and that would be the part of the game where I say they got goalied. He made a bunch mm -hmm. of really great saves in like a five minute stretch mm -hmm. of the game where I thought that was one of the big differences for sure. But like, yeah, I, goalie's hard for me. He played great. He played great. I think he played great. I don't think they got a ton of really great chances except for that stretch like I'm talking about but I would definitely say that he played really well, but I don't know if it's a full goalie. I don't know if I can go full goalie. Yeah. Well, what's hard is the two teams are so equal that when he plays really well in the first period and change and Samsonov gives up a couple, it changes the whole temperature of the game, right? Like yeah. mm -hmm. you get guys like uh, Domi and Bertuzzi who are more desperate to now show that it's, they got the toughness and snot and they're not going to stand for this. And that kind of backfires a yeah. little bit. So yeah, it's not like a full goalieing in terms of like, wow, that guy stole them one so much as he was slightly better at a crucial part of the game and it allowed Boston to get into their structure, yeah. which is where they really thrive. It didn't force them to open up a little, you know? The, yeah. yeah. The reason why I asked this though is because I, again, it like, you know, if you do the deserve to win meter which highly value shots and I think yeah. takes out of uh, score effects, but either way, it doesn't matter. It's like you look at the box score of this game and one goaltender, I think, made what, 18, 17 saves and the other one made 35. And so yeah. I feel like this most simplistic way for people to kind of boil this one down is that the goaltender just didn't come up with stops. And there were some ugly ones from Samsonov. But I want to ask you guys this question, because to me, there was like one major turning point in the game, which is Matthews has an open net yeah. and he misses the cage. and shortly following that Samsonov lets in what I thought was his worst goal of the night. And so let's add, I'll start with you, Borny, which one of those things to you is the more critical and unforgivable miss? I, you know, I don't know. Like I, I don't want to label either of them unforgivable. Cause I think say, you know, Matthews makes a tremendous play here to get in and to get that shot off. And he has oh. a split second from a tough angle. Like it's, it's not unforgivable to me. It's an unbelievable play he makes. And and to be honest, yeah. Samson off on the other side, it's one of those ones where like, I think I want that save, but you know, it's not egregious either. And that to me is the story of the game that like it incrementally got away from them in a way that, you know, the score doesn't do it justice, but I also don't think they deserve to win either. So mm -hmm. close game and the score doesn't show it as that. Yeah. To me, we're having a completely different Leafs talk right now if that puck <coughs> excuse me goes in the net for Matthews yeah. I, I really felt like that was the point of the game where it was clearly was still one nothing that would have tied the game it felt like the Leafs were building into the game and I know going down two nothing in a game shouldn't break you I know that shouldn't like you know really 
send you packing, but it felt like it did. It felt like it really, that swing of emotion where they were pushing, they were pushing, they're getting back in this game. Matthews hits the post. It's clearly such a backbreaker. And then to have them come down and score right, right away felt like it completely mm-hmm. swung the game. And yeah, like I, you know, Samsonov, I don't know which one of them I want back, but you know, it's just you know, four going the net by him. It's just, it's and the other goalie plays really well. So I think he'll be a guy that people look to blame. But I'm not. I'm not necessarily going to fully put it on him. I guess you'd like a couple saves, but yeah. yeah. Anyways, I, I just got the Sport Logic like stats for the game or whatever. Leafs were uh, slot shots were 17, 13. Leafs 14, 8 in high danger chances. So certainly, um, you know, some credit to Swayman. Do yeah, Swayman, yeah, so Swayman's a problem. Yeah, sure. Swayman is certainly yeah. a problem for the Leafs. Like he is a. Are they going to really, start him in game really two? We can get to goal. that later. Well, yeah, I, I I do think that the same the Swayman question is going to be more an interesting one for Boston. But I, I mean, just to close on the Matthews thing, I will say this: like he was clearly the Leafs' best player tonight, right? Like, yeah. does anyone disagree? Dewar had some moments, boys. Yeah, Dewar Dewar, yeah, Dewar, Dewar was Bison. Dewar won my heart. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dewar led the group chat in positive text. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he won. <laughs> <laughs> I th- I had two. I had two yeah. positive Dewar yeah. texts because he also had the assist later in the game on the on the actual goal. So yes, Dewar was the most uh, or the least polarizing player. But I, I just will say for Matthews is, hey man, it's a tough angle, and you're right, Borny. It's a great play to get to the puck. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, this has been part of the story with Austin Matthews is you get opportunities yeah. and you get chances. And here's a wide open cage. And I think about like bad goals, and I hated a three of those Samsonov goals. Like I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I'd like to have saves on three of them like the first one whatever it's a two on one but i do think about stuff like that when we discuss the the goaltending having an effect in this game and in all games where you go oh they got goalied or they didn't get the better goaltending it's like sammy i'm with you like when he missed that wide open cage it felt like such a deflating moment and you go man Mm -hmm. you're the best goal scorer on the planet hit the net like find a way to put that one in clutch up put it in tap it in i don't care what it is make it happen no i I will say there are um you know, there are things about tonight that make me f- so I forever have been a guy who's going process is good. Results aren't there. Yeah. Process is good. Results were come. You know, after a while, you have to go, what am I missing about the process? You know, like maybe it's not good because I feel exactly the same as I felt in the past. You play that game over and they probably win it when you mm. never win it. Yeah. That's not the case. Like yeah. something's wrong in the process. And so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm. It has me second guessing myself. What do you think it is, though, Born? Like, let's stick with you for a second. Like, if you had to say what was the most troubling thing for you then in the game, what would it yeah. be? I can tell you, it's that these. If you want to talk about the core guys, typically Morgan's been very good. I didn't think he was good. Typically McCabe's good. I didn't think he was good. But with 16 yeah. and 34, which is what we're always going to talk about with this, Marner will not go north. He gets his first touch and he retreats. He brings it back. He's like playoff Engvall, and then Matthews. How many times a season did you see him pass on a oh, on a one timer for a backdoor tip pass, which he did three mm-hmm. times tonight, rather yeah. than just heat it up on those pa- on that penalty? I'm sorry, on that power play coming out of the second period, yep. he was trying that like backdoor shot tip, and pass it's a fine play. Bars. Yeah, it's one they've obviously like been like, all right, we've coached this up. This is what we're gonna go to here. This yeah. is what we're gonna do- go to here. And I thought the one that he gave to Tavares was actually a good pass. Yeah, Tavar shouldn't get the lo- the hand low enough, and he did. It was a tap in if he gets the hand low enough. But you're right. You're very right. Like I just, and that to me is another version of go north. Like Matthews, I think it was three nothing, and he tried to do it after the power play. And it's like, okay, now yeah. let's hit it. Like you know, they know Ovechkin's going to shoot too. You just got to beat him. So that is two versions of just go right at him. And for Marner, it's skating north, and Matthews, it's yeah. hitting it. Yeah, uh, I'm with both you guys. Uh, I think that's sharp analysis. And I just, to me, to kind of overly simplify it, it just feels like early on in these games, again, saves aside, the Leafs look like the tighter team to me. The team that's just like not winning these small little battles along the boards. And then Boston starts to establish themselves like over and over and over again. And then when they when they start to get that lead and Toronto starts to like almost – what loosen up, play a little bit more free. What were the shots from like the second and third period onward, right? Like it was mm-hmm. pretty dominant from that point forward. Once Boston kind of had the game in their hands, but it just felt like everything that's in a tight area, Toronto doesn't have that same finish. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, like you just want them to make a winning play once in a while. And I don't know how many of those they actually had tonight, despite the, again, the shot counter. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, 
like, I think, yeah, I, the, the ultimate goal or the ultimate thing that will come out of this is that the shot counter is incredibly deceiving when you're looking at the box score. Like if you're looking back on yeah. this yeah. in five years, like, wow, they really outshot them. And really, that was a, they should have won that one. I think that we can all be tricked pretty hard by the shot counter in this game. Not a ton of, you you. Said, how many slot shots did you say they had Borny? Uh, yeah. Leafs had 17 slot shots yeah. over the game. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's a lot of finish slamming, one, but please yeah. we'll have a yeah, God finish one. Yeah. You know what though, Born? I, I think I, that a lot of people are with you though, about the whole, if you play it over again, like what happens here, I will say this. I'm pretty frustrated with the loss just from the standpoint of, like I said, it's, it's all the things that keep happening to you. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to ignore, but yeah. also like a part of me goes, man, you inject Nylander back into the lineup. Uh, you play that game again you're there. Like they just didn't look like a team that got completely outclassed tonight. Well, yeah. I, I thought at five on five, actually that they were okay for some of like, they just played yeah. way too much shorthanded and they just taken like stupid penalties and their penalty kill. Like we talk about like mm. part of the, the, the reoccurring dream here is yeah. the penalty kill and having it kill them. But I thought at five on five, they were actually all right for a lot, a lot of this game. So yeah, yeah I mean, you, you worry about Willie and what's going on with that, but you're the point's well made. It felt like that third line was screaming out for him. You know, there was just points throughout the game where it felt like they were the Leafs' worst and they were getting caved in. They needed him. So, yeah, Willie, guess what? A 100-point winger that's really fast and really good makes a huge difference. I don't think it's yeah. like a breaking news, but you're right. Like, they missed him. And that combination of Yarncroc having not played, yes. you know, maybe a game in the past two months, Willie being out, and all of a sudden, you know, Robertson at one point turns one over and they're hemmed in for a whole shift. He, he got trucked later in the game. Like, he, he was skating and working. But that third line was a liability in a way that we haven't seen, like turning pucks over, not able to break it out up the wall. And, and J.D., this is probably what you're talking about along the walls, these sort of little plays where you can't get them stopped yeah. You can't get a piece of it. You can't get going north. And, you know, like, it just felt like they were stuck. And so often it was because of this line. So you're right. If Nylander's there, maybe it's a totally different feel that you like your third line and it's an advantage. But in this game, it really hurt the Leafs tonight. So, so this is one of my things, though, about this game that I feel most strongly about, though, which is if you look at Boston's lineup, like everything has a purpose. Like everybody seems to have a purpose. And the thing that bothered me about this third line and – to a lesser extent, the fourth, because I thought they were okay, even though Reeves had, uh, if you want to talk about like backbreaking plays in the game, like yeah. him trying to finish a hit and doing the Leafs annual uh, fighter guy that does a dumb thing in game one, the Kyle well, Clifford Edmonton, Award. Edmonton, maybe, you know, you don't need to step up there sure. when you got your fourth line on the ice. I mean, it's your, your Edmonton. I think you could maybe read that play a little bit better. He's stepping way up, big pinch. I think, I think, I think part of it's on him too, right? Like he comes way down. Sure. So they can they can split the Clifford Award. They can split the blame. It's not just all the Clifford Award. I just split the Clifford Award. I just think that if you look at the Leafs third line and the and again they're hurt, they're missing McMahon and obviously missed him and obviously they're missing Nylander. So they're playing shorthanded, but it's like it, it's the office space thing. What is it that you say you do here? Like what is mm -hmm. the purpose of that line? What is your role as a line? And and of I have course. zero clue what exactly they were supposed to be doing tonight. I thought the fourth line was their best for a lot of the No, no you're talking no, third. Talking about oh, the third, third. third. I yeah. just and, and you know yeah. what, JD, Sorry. I feel like they felt like that too at times when I thought Keith did a good job of being like, we're going to do yarn crock with Dewar and Camp in the D zone and make it a purely D zone line. Mm -hmm. And they were good. They Every time they went out, I think they ended up with the puck and got it broken out. And to me, with a couple other guys, with Nylander and McMahon in, you could mm -hmm. have yarn crock there all the time. You probably wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But you could, and you have the opportunity to do so many different things. So it's crazy, man. They what they say, Nealander hasn't missed a game in eight years. He's like 2016. 2016 yeah. was the last time he missed a game due to injury. And nothing happened that we're yeah. like, you know, you're like, that's the moment. So this is baffling. And you know, so they lose by by three, four goals tonight. So it's you're not gonna solely blame it on that, but boy, that hurt. Yeah. Okay, I gotta give a theory on Nealander. Okay. He's gotta be sick. Sick. Like they said that it was a lingering thing, or I think I read somewhere that they said, oh, it was something lingering, he woke up not feeling right. I go, there is absolutely no way in hell, despite his chase for 100 points, that the Leafs would have played him in that final game of the season if he was dealing with the lingering issue that could have benefited from a day's rest. 
And agree, the fact yeah. that like he woke up not feeling well and that guys were talking about him not being ready to go and that he is such an Iron Man, I've just I've got to assume that it's an illness and not an injury because you're right, like it doesn't come up in the post game. It's completely undiscussed. This is a team that sat Max Domi for the last two games of the season. They had healthy mm-hmm. forwards to play. Like I, I just I, I cannot envision a scenario where, or actually, sorry, I can. But it's a really ugly look for the Maple Leafs if you tell me that the season ends and Nylander comes back and goes, I was actually dealing with a lingering injury that I was trying to play through the final 10 games of the season and it cost me playing game one. Like, I just, yeah. how does that operate? So, well, I, I, guessing- you know, I, hold on, because I've heard this a couple places where people are like, why'd they let him play the Tuesday, Wednesday if yeah. he had some lingering whatever? It's possible while playing Wednesday, you know, he pulled a groin or something a little bit. Sure. It didn't feel right. And the next day it bugged him. Like it's it not, he didn't necessarily have something before, but JD, I think you're probably right about the sickness thing where you just wake up and you can't do it. I, it, Cause I, it, it is oh, very he strange. Be, he better for be a non contact injury. Yeah. Oh, I know, right? yeah. Like I, like, I don't want to be that guy, but like you better be, you know, guy on death's doorstep here, but to not play yeah. in this game. Because he is incredibly important to this team, as we saw tonight, and as we all know, and the role that he's going to play, they need him to kind of be the the down the lineup guy. So if he's, yeah, I don't know. I, I I'm just I'm really hoping he's hurt or sick or very one of the both to miss game one. That's I hope he's sick. I hope he's sick. I surely hope he's not hurt. Uh, yeah. But yeah, given the track record of going back to 2016 and not missing hockey games, I'm going to give this guy a pretty hearty benefit of the doubt. For that sure. He is in yeah. some kind of uh, extreme pain. You just hope that it's enough to rebound. Before we get into special team stuff, because I think that, again, it's probably one of the biggest things that we haven't touched on yet. Um, I do want to ask you guys, you know, Bourne, I'll start with you. What, like, they didn't have Nylander tonight, but they still did have a second line. Tavares ends up with a bunch of shots, but what did you think about the second line overall? Ah, I thought Tavares was, you know, his whole thing now is if we get you the puck around the net, can you do something with it? We don't need you to carry a line. We don't need you to transport the puck. We don't need you to win on the four check. Just if you get a chance, we need you to put it in. And that breakaway at the start of the uh, the first period, or sorry, the third period where he's in alone and he takes a clapper from the top of the hash marks. You know, he gets the touch on the back door, Sammy. He doesn't have his bottom hand hard on the stick to get a piece of it. He got multiple touches in tight. If you can't do that, you yeah. know, that was really disappointing. I, uh, Tavares didn't have a great game, and I didn't, I would not have known Mitch Marner played tonight had I not been looking for him at times. Yeah. He, I mean, I think Tavares ended up with five or six shots because of that one power yep. player. He was jamming him into the pads uh, for, yeah. for the whole shift or whatever. But yeah. I, you need more from Marner. You just do. I mean, the guy is, yeah. he's like, we've talked about this before. We've gone through this before, but it's just the differences between him and the regular season in the playoffs. Seems like he doesn't want to get hit. There's not enough space. He just goes backwards. Like you said, Borny earlier in the show, he just, it just wasn't good enough tonight. And we all know it. They know it. He knows it. It's just gotta be better. The Leafs have any chance of beating the Bruins. They need him to be really, really good. And I can't say to you that I love the start. <laughs> I, like, I can't. I wish it looked a little better than this in game one, boys. That's what I'll say because yeah. it looked bad. Looked very bad. I thought Nyes was actually the best guy in that line tonight. Physical, yeah, a couple turnovers. Physical, at least he ran into them guys. He did turn the puck over uh, in a bad spot a couple times, but at least he was using his body, winning pucks back here and there. But yeah, not a good night for the second line at all. I like Nyes the most too, but I did think that he faded as the game went on. For sure. Like, Mm -hmm. thought that he started strong, and I was like, wow, Nyes is really popping. Like, he's around the play a lot. Oh, he's really in on the forecheck. And then when I looked down at my notes, those Nyes plays were all in the first. Yeah. Yeah. Like, everything I had from him. Probably fourth line if they get McMahon and Nylander back. Yeah. I just, you got to probably end up sticking with it. I just, you guys know this. There's the Marner, I always call it like the water bug test, right? Where it feels like he's everywhere and he's just like, he's moving all kinds of different ways. He feels unpredictable. He's creating yeah. for others. He's causing turnovers. He had two shots tonight. And one of those shots almost put me into uh, heart cardiac arrest because he looked off Austin Matthews with his stick up in the air on a power play where he tried to filter one to the net. And the yeah, other was from 85 feet shorthanded. I remember it. He threw it on net. Yeah, like oh, I, yeah. I just, I, I, a- I didn't. You're, I'm with you. Like I, like those are the two most notable plays for me tonight for Mitch Marner, and that's just not enough for. No. Yeah, 
a guy who your cohort is reporting now wants more than Nylander <laughs> the following off season. So probably did, like, I'd say he and Nylander did about the same tonight, to be honest. It's like they, <laughs> they had very similar impacts on the game. Uh, okay. So let's get into the special teams because this is another thing. This has been a real problem for the Leafs in the past. Like you go through it and what do you find? It's a lot of, oh, and they didn't score on the power play and they got caved in on the penalty kill. Which one was more concerning to you, Sammy? Penalty kill. Penalty kill for sure. I, I think, you know, I they got the, the, the power play at the end of the game when it's kind of over. You know, I think they only got the three. They got the four on three where they had chances. They had looks. I thought it was like okay. a positive thing. But the penalty kill is to me, it's just, this is just going to kill them. It's, you know, <laughs> you're going into this series. You know, it's not great. It had a little stretch there where it kind of got better and then it got worse again towards the end of the year. And this to me, it's just, especially if you're going to try to play this physical brand of hockey where it's like, we're not going to get pushed around by the big bad Bruins. And then of course, you know, now that the Leafs have figured out a way to, to build a more rough and tumble team, the the refs are calling every single ticky tack call, which is a really great development. But yeah, I just, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how it gets better. So you just got to stay out of the box. You just, you can't take six penalties in a game. Like it's just, it's way too much. They're trying to be aggressive. I get it. But yeah, this is incredibly concerning to me to the way it looked tonight. Yeah. I mean, even the goals aside, the first couple ones they killed off, they hit the post a half dozen times. It felt like, <laughs> know. you know, it's, uh, I feel like their forwards get sucked out really high. Like there's a lot of room low for plays. Doesn't it feel yeah. like there's always a backdoor two on one or something about to unfold? You know, unfortunately, the, the goals that beat him uh, or the DeBrusque one that he shoots in from distance is just a shot off the half wall. Like, that's the type of shot, you know, where you see someone take it and you're like, God, that's a bit of a rally killer for us. So, you know, maybe Sammy could do more. Bieksa talked about uh, not liking Benoit's angle, but I just feel like a tighter box is going to do them better. If you don't trust your team, at least keep it in tight and make them beat you from distance because yeah. you can't be having like the 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 one that DeBrus finished from net front. That one, that, that, that one will kill you. I just hated like, that one so much. Yeah, Just feels like they're caught in between – like being a, an aggressive pa uh, penalty sure, kill, agree. but like, I don't know. Oh, we're, we're overthinking it. Oh, we're caught in a position. Like they don't feel like they know what their identity is on the penalty kill. And they're just making these huge mistakes that, like you said, lead to wide open tap-ins and backdoor plays. And it's just, yeah. it's a really un, not aesthetically pleasing watch. Like it's just, it really feels like they're skating around. It's a fire drill at all times. It's not spread out. So yeah. I, I did actually feel like to Marner's credit that he looked okay on the penalty kill at times because he yeah. will make some plays where he'll intercept pucks. But Bourne, I'm with you about the forwards being so high thing is when I see that and they're so aggressive out on those shots, like the DeBrusque one in particular, it's like, well then break up the play, you know, have one where you're breaking it up and getting yeah. a stick on it. And I don't like that Samsonov didn't battle on that one. Like it seemed like he just sort of gave up a bit and it's yeah. soft. It's like ugly from a lot of different looks. But if you are going to play that aggressively with the forwards up that high and you're not in tight like that, then I would expect more like breakups with sticks and more hits and more yeah. transition yeah. plays for the yeah. Leafs. And it doesn't totally. feel like they're getting that payoff for playing that way. And so to me, that's where the reevaluation comes in. It's just... Yeah. Again, it's scary when we start talking about stuff like, well, are you trying to change up the penalty kill after a game? And are you trying to, are you thinking about your goaltending after a game? You just like can't, having multiple can't, things on the agenda feels panicky. Just can't take penalties. You just can't take stupid penalties. Like Max Domi, I tweeted it. I said, Max has got to be careful. I tweeted it early in the first period when he's gets, how the hell did McAvoy get a penalty on that play? That was the most insane to have right. them taking two guys off. Like it yeah. should have been a it should have been a power play early in the game. And then he just hacks Marshawn on the wrist right in front of the ref. It's Which, like, like I I look at Marshawn's expo exposed wrists and I think I would slash those too. But you're trying to win a playoff game. You just can't. Yeah. So I thought he had a lot of like I'm the guy who put the Instagram reel video. <laughs> I, get I get it. He's yeah. wires crossed. He's passionate. Yeah. He cares. He wants like yeah. he cares so I, much. I mean, big and, fan. Big fan big of the energy and the commitment, but it's tough. Sure. You gotta rein it in. That's it. I, I will say this. I am uh, Sammy uh, born. Uh, you didn't do. I don't think I've ever done a show with you where we've done our ref take, but Sam and I rarely bring up the officiating I where I, I like. I, I just find it to be in, us, in, because we're always like. 
we don't bring up the refs and it's yeah. like every third show we're like wow yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i just yeah I, I i didn't love how i thought there was a couple tonight where i'm like oh really okay fine yeah. you know the cave one yeah no good yeah. It's it certainly, but that's why I'm putting it in what at the 20 some minute mark of the show is I just, yeah. I'd rather they let them play. Like I actually liked it that on the right before the Bertuzzi penalty, actually that, you know, Dewar drives, who is it? Uh, peek into the net and it's like a snow wash and they don't take anybody. I'm like, nice. Yeah. And then right after this happens and I go, are you kidding? I'm like, I do. Sick. I did wonder if those were related. They were like, that they was pretty definitely crazy. were. You know, I think they were. I think they were like, hey, we just picked Dewar off of a guy who he was buried into the net and was snow washing. Look at this Dewar. That's the paw in him. You know, like that is don't mess with the guy from the paw. Yeah, he's committed. <laughs> that's that's the big energy. That. Uh, yeah, I'm with yeah. you guys that the penalty kill was more concerning, but I actually don't think the margin is that great between the two. I want the power play to feel more threatening and mm. it just doesn't. And when it doesn't convert, it feels like a lot of. Like it takes the Leafs like three or four minutes to re-engage in the play and find themselves yeah. again. And it feel the thing to, that drives you crazy about the Leafs power play when it's not going well is it feels like it takes them half the time to get the puck in the damn zone. Like yeah. they just, it's like let's hey let's drop it back four more times. Maybe this drop back will be the one that gets us in here. It's just it's so frustrating to watch because listen, they re- clearly do the drop back because it works. Everyone does it because it works. It enters the zone. It does work. I get it. But like once in a while, you're like, can we get a hard rim and a battle one to get this puck once in a while? Like, yeah, 100%. Can we, can we I think they should mix it in. One hard Especially rim. Especially with no Elander, right? Like yeah. that's what that was yeah. my first thought is, okay, you don't have your guy that can just- 3,000? Yeah, yeah exactly. like you don't have the, the zone entry bot. So like figure out a different thing or just switch it up, give them a different look. And I just didn't feel like that was the case. Anyway, um, is there anything Defense. you guys want to hit on? Before I get into biggest positives, uh, I do positive. want to talk about the six D, the six D, and oh, okay. be like, you know, because there's three D out that they have yeah. to make some decisions on. Uh, I think Morgan Riley. We talk about playoff Morgan. He'll be ready at game time. Mm-hmm. I thought bad gaps, slow energy, didn't look great for me. I I hope that switch is around the corner. He's gonna flip because he he yeah. missed it tonight. The 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 yeah. the switch did not get flipped tonight. And then um, their other best guy, McCabe, just handed the puck to Boston. And it was just kind of a lack of composure at times. Like he'd get a touch on one and he'd be like, you know, that is sleepy on that one. He gets his pocket picked. I'll show a couple more here where he just has time and says, well, here, why don't, why don't you guys have it? Ooh, Not loving that. I so thought the Leafs were way too cute in their own end trying to break it out, especially early. Um, same stuff like that we basically talked about since game one. Hey, can this team break the puck out? And the thing with Morgan happened. Riley is... You're supposed to be a little bit more forgiving of the gap control stuff when he's breaking the puck out well, and I didn't really get a lot of that tonight. 44 was very much at the bottom of the list in terms of Leafs that uh, I have good things to say about. Well, I don't think that's getting cute in their own zone, but I I just don't think they have the ability when the Bruins got that hard forecheck going. They made them force the Leafs into doing these like little touch area passes in their own zone Mm. because they they can't break it out. They're, they're, they're slow back there. It just feels like they can't make the decisions quick enough to get the puck out because they're leaning on them. And that's when they need Morgan to be able to do that. He's their best guy out of the McCabe to do it. But like Edmondson can't break it out. LeBouche but Edmondson can't... will go north with it at least. He'll yeah, at least just... get it going that way. No, but that is what I feel about too cute is I feel like there's a lot of times where guys are turning back around in yeah. their own end when they have the pucks on their stick. And they're going, okay, I don't want to give up possession. I don't want to just chip the puck out. I'm going to hold on to it for a second. And then a big bodied Bruin is on their backs going, I'll actually take that. Thank you very much. And it ends up in a net negative play. And so, no, I I really do not like that stuff. And yeah, uh, Riley was a dash too. So let's hear a positive. I'd like to hear your positives. All right, let's go to positives. (laughs) Well, let's who wants to go first. Okay, so non Connor Dewar division. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, I guess we already <laughs> used Connor Dewar. So yeah, I. I do, by the way, Dewar was mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Non Connor Dewar division. Uh, go. Uh, I think Matthews will score more in game two. I thought he looked really good. I thought he looked like he had some chances. I know we we talked about him not scoring, but I do think it will turn for him. And I. I like the way that Marner looked where he was just a ghost. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's we, scarier. 
that's way scarier to me. I thought Matthews looked really good, had the puck a lot. I thought he played well with those two guys. Like I, I, I do think that he will turn it around. And I, I thought the way he looked, obviously he didn't score. We know the, the whole thing, but sure. I did like the way he looked. Thought he looked big, thought he looked fast, thought he looked yeah. dominant, was using his body, was in the scrums. Liked yeah, and, and you know what? There's been years where the Leafs have just gone away. Yeah. They've just gone away and Max Domi won't go away. And I like that. I like that he's going to be win or lose or whatever. He's going to be involved. That's good. I thought Yarn Kroc in his first game back liked his touches, liked that he was able to help with the defensive side of things. You know, he wasn't like awesome, but we're no. really reaching here, boys. Uh, uh, Lilligren didn't get exposed in any way. Yeah. Well, like other than when he got dumped viciously into the Bruins bench, which was a tough look for him. It's like, oh, yeah, the guy that everyone thinks is the Pat softest blue liner on the team gets <laughs> flipped in there. And it was just like a full, he went ass over key, uh, tea kettle. Just look at that thing. Like the skates I are mean, full. He got hit by he an actual refrigerator. Oh, yeah. There's Poor nothing guys. better. There's nothing that gets the crowd going like somebody going into the boards, like into the bench. I know. Uh, that's when, yeah. you know, I'll also give a I'll give a, uh, a a positive to our beloved Sportsnet production team hitting the people with the wow. same old song and dance, going to commercial late in the third period when the Leafs are losing and they're going to Matthews looking sad on the bench. I'm like, that is some elite <laughs> production. Like, <laughs> yeah, holy yeah. hell. <laughs> the uh, same old song and dance. I was like, wow, that's harsh. <laughs> that is a harsh, uh, harsh way to go. <laughs> okay, so my I have two minor other positives. I do think that Camp again, he scored a goal tonight. Yeah. Uh, I, but I thought overall, like, you might have something with Dewar, Camp, and Yarncrock. Mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, if you can get guys healthy like that, that might actually be something that works for you because those mm -hmm. guys just look like they, they just look like good depth playoff players like it. And I actually didn't think Reeves was horrific minus oh. the early play. So I, I just thought like, hey, your depth guys actually did depthy guy things and they provided a goal tonight. Not bad. <laughs> yeah. Fourth Camp line, definitely better than third line. Camp almost missed that. No, he tucked it right inside the post. He healed it like in a wide open net. Right no, but you know, Camp has actually been sneaky decent for like two months, and I know that sounds dramatic, but he's he's been fine. He's been pretty good. Yeah. Back to what I would kind of thought of him as. I think last year he had the fifth most ice time among Leaf forwards, and yeah. has not looked like that guy often. So good, good stretch for him lately. You know, Benoit. I like that he'll still skate the puck up the ice. I thought he was fine. You know, like mm. some some of the guys that were just. Not bad, which is like the, the highest of praise. Yeah. But like Sammy, I thought Matthews was hounding the puck and getting opportunities. And yeah, that's all the ben good I got. Just like a sloppy uh, penalty, though, too. It was like, I just, it's like, yeah, you lose points when you take those ugly ones. Like, even for 34, they bail tonight, him out. He takes five all year. They couldn't bail him out. Eh? Yeah, that's what I mean. I just thought that one. And then, yeah, um, my other positive is this is like, again, reaching so heavily, but Sheldon Keefe not pulling. Ilya Samsonov and trying to find magic with wool after the fourth goal and just going yeah. like, you know what? You're eating this. If I am going to start the kid, he's going to start fresh. He's not going to come here. I'm not going to have both my goaltenders get pumped on yeah. the same so, evening. What and, two goalies start game two? So hold on, Samsonov. hold on, hold on, hold on. So they, I know they do like the alternate alternating thing in Boston. No, Swayman's going to play. They're not going to, they're, there's, why is that a question? There's, the, there's last year. Yeah. I think I think I don't I don't think they have missed an alternating game for I don't know how long. They just take turns. Stop well, fifty five, give up ten. I got a stat for you. I hope he switches. Okay. Okay. Put in the other guy. How many Put games this guy. season <laughs> has Olmark played consecutively? How many times this season has he played consecutively? I don't know. Is it twice or something? Once. And that's a guy who won the Vesna last year. So won yeah, the if anybody and couldn't get yeah. more than that. Didn't get more than one consecutive start this season. It's crazy because he was the much hotter guy down the stretch. I know you guys know this stuff. Yeah. This is for the audience. But uh, Swayman was not very good. And then he's just a leaf killer. And he stepped in the net and was like, I know these losers. I'll shut them down. And he did exactly. <laughs> these guys? You want me to stop these guys? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll handle that. I think that if – here's what I'll say. More likely goaltender out of the net for game two is the winning goaltender from tonight, in my opinion. No, I agree. Yeah. I don't know if I, you know, you're right. You're totally right. Because Samsonov didn't do enough to lose the net once you've declared him the starter. But should you have done that? And, I don't know. And this is what I would say about the Samsonov thing. 
is he clearly has a short leash in the in the following game. Yeah. But if you pull him, as much as he's had the incredible comeback this season, I don't know if you can ever go back to him. And it'd be it'd be nice if Wool didn't have you know his worst numbers against the Bruins, <laughs> like yeah. the guy that you have to throw in that has been the anti Swayman. So yeah, I don't know. I just I, yeah, like I don't Sam, think it's this. I, I think some people think this one's like an, an easy call, like immediate Wool, and I, I think that's a little too reactionary well, for me. I think well, it should Sam's be uh, Sammy. He was like actually, it's kind of like the worst case scenario where he wasn't great, but he wasn't close no. to bad enough to come out. Like it's not like he was, you know. I, but the he, problem was they he they hit thirty posts on him, and he was yeah, swimming, and he's yeah. lucky it was four. But and he's and he's playing on Monday. Yeah, so you know why? Because JD is exactly right. You can't put him back in after you pull him out. So you got to say, yeah. all right, we're sticking with you through thick and thin. And the second it gets thin, he's out of there. Yeah. yeah, I think it's it's almost like it. If you you go into this next game in Boston, right? And you're on the road. It's TD Garden. It's a horrible place to play. And if he's bad, you can tell the team down like 0-2 in the series. Hey, it's all his fault. This yeah. idiot couldn't oh, make a save. In the room, and we're if done we can this just guy. get a couple of saves from you, kid, we don't need you to be great. We just need a couple of saves. Look at the shots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at yeah. the shots. We don't need you to be a world breaker. I just don't want to start the kid with an 865 save in three games against Boston in TD Garden, basically being like, we need it now. It's no, no, I agree. I, him on the, him in, in Toronto, to me, is a much more palatable yeah. thing where it's like, the home fans and I think, mm. you know, the way people feel about Samsonov is one of your hobby horses, how like people have different expectations for Wall and Samsonov, which I think you're probably bang on about. And I think people probably like Wall more and him starting game one in Toronto. I could see that if he's bad. Like, I, I think yeah. you're right. Don't put Wall in Boston in game two. I, I don't, I don't picture that going well. Cause then you don't have two goalies. Then you have none. Then Matt Murray starts so game desperate. three. Then Matt Murray feels so three. desperate. Yeah. Like, yeah, he does. Memory. Yeah. I, t I told Bourne the other day, like, I don't like that I had the thought about it. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't like that I had, I know, I was like, haha, I'm just kidding, but I did think about it, you yeah. know. Uh, it was, yeah. I did check the Marley's box score to see what he <laughs> It hasn't been great, night. I don't think. Like, I think he no. let in five against, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, the Utica Comets let him up for five. <laughs> <laughs> Boys. Bleak yeah. conversation game one. I don't like how we're closing this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anything else for rapid fire? Are we done here? No, I'm good, but I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, born. You'd looked up and you didn't find anything up in that old brain. You just did the uh, the the I deep did the, look. Yeah, no, we have exhausted nothing. My nothing. Analysis. Um, yeah, thanks to everybody that watched tonight. Uh, the the trauma folk, the people yeah. who wanted to just uh, sit in the mud Work with us through we, it. We really appreciate you. So please leave a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at JD Bunkus, at JT Bourne, at Sammy McKee. Reach out anytime. We always love it when you interact with the show, especially when you share it. And we'll see you Monday night, hopefully after a Leafs win.